Good morning and welcome to Highway Gospel Online. I'm so glad that you have chosen to take time out of your morning to spend with us. If you are a first time guest, I'd like to send an extra special welcome to you. And we'd love to have the opportunity to connect with you further. If you just take out your phone and you text us the word welcome to 416-267-1189 and you follow the prompts that are given to you, we can send you a more formal message in the mail. We also want to encourage you, join the chat. It's a great way to connect with the people who are also watching alongside you. So don't be shy, please say hi. <clears throat> the chat is super easy to use, but you have to subscribe to our channel first. Just hit the word subscribe, and while you're at it, why don't you hit the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever Highway Online is going to be premiering. To find out more about any upcoming events here at Highway, just go to our website, highwaygospel.ca, and click the events tab, and it'll show you everything that's coming up. I want to send uh, a special thank you to all those who have been continually giving to the mission here at Highway. And as a reminder, there's four ways to give. You can e-transfer us, you can use the Tithely app, you can give by using our website, and you can also send a check in the mail. We ask that you don't uh, send cash. Now to find the digital teaching notes for today's sermon, you can open up your Uversion app, go to events, and find Highway Gospel. Please check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, Highway is a place to belong and you belong here.
Good morning. It's so great to have you joining us today at Highway Online. We are so honored that you are here. I want to tell you a story about Helen Keller. I'm pretty sure that name is familiar to you. And if you don't know who Helen Keller was, she was uh, born in 1880. And at the age of about 19 months, she became very ill. And her sickness caused her to become deaf and blind. And so she with her life would later become an advocate for those who were deaf and blind and did a lot of work in, in helping that community. 
Well, she once wrote an article entitled Three Days of to See, Three Days to See. In that article, she outlined that if she were given three days of sight, what she would do with each of her three days. And uh, let me just give you a real recap here. But basically, she said on the first day, she wanted to see her friends, especially her teacher, Miss Ann Sullivan Massey. Uh, and then she wanted to spend time uh, knowing her friends and looking at them and then spending the rest of that day out in nature and, and understanding the world that she was in. The second day, she said she would like to see the dawn, the sunrise early in the morning, the colors that it would provide and, and the beauty that it would be. And then she wanted to spend the rest of the day visiting all different kinds of museums and theaters and, and watching the shows and participating in that and seeing that. And then the third day, she said she'd like to spend her day exploring her hometown of New York City. She wanted to see the bustle of people. She wanted to uh, imagine what it was like. She wanted to go throughout the entire part of New York City, all of its different parts of the city, and she wanted to end up by going up the Empire State Building and look at all the surrounding things that were around there. Then she concluded that article with these words. I, who am blind, can give one hint to those who see. Use your eyes as if tomorrow you were stricken blind. See, blindness in the 21st century is still a challenge. But you know, it was much, much worse in Jesus' day. In first century Palestine, blindness meant that you would be subject to abject poverty, that you would uh, be reduced to being a beggar, to beg for your living, that you would be at the mercy and the, gent and the kindness and even the gentleness of the people around you. You would have to rely on your family, if you had a family, to help you sustain and make it through life. Well, today I want to share a story with you about a blind man who could see better than all those around him. He could see better than those with sight. You see, sometimes the blind can see better than the rest of us. We find the story about this blind man recorded for us in Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. It says this, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Thamias, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So here we meet a guy. His name is Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was blind. And like I mentioned a moment ago, because he was blind, he, he was subject to a hard life. He was reduced to being a beggar. He would rely on other people to lead him and guide him, to help him get from uh, point A to point B. He would need the kindness and mercy of strangers who might pass by as he'd beg for money or even beg for food. In fact, in Jesus' day, it was common to see the handicapped, the lame, the blind, sitting on the side of the road outside of Jericho. I even imagine that Bartimaeus probably even had his own regular spot where every day he would go and sit. But here's something we learned in this story that Bartimaeus learned to listen. 
Maybe this was his survival mode. Maybe uh, it was his way of paying attention to the surroundings around him because he couldn't see. But he had learned to listen. And on this particular day, there was the commotion of a crowd. It, it was out of the ordinary. It's not something he would probably have been used to sitting there day after day watching or list, not watching, but listening as the people went by. And he understood that this thing that is suddenly happening that day is out of the ordinary. There's this big commotion. And so, you know, Bartimaeus uh, probably asked, what's going on? What's going on? And, and, uh, he heard somebody say, oh, Jesus is coming, or we're following Jesus, or, or the master is here. We don't know exactly what was said. The Bible doesn't tell us. But he understood that leading this crowd, and this crowd was all about Jesus. He learned that because he was willing to listen. And when he listened and heard it was Jesus, he realized that this is a day that could radically change his life. You see, we need to learn to listen. Did you know that God speaks? Yes, God still speaks today. He may not be speaking an audible voice. That's, that's not normally. He's able to, and he, he can if he chooses to, but you need to learn how to listen to God's voice, how to hear God's voice and hear what God says. So how do you hear God's voice? Well, it starts by keeping your heart in tune with God's heart. And you do that through the word, that God reveals his heart to us in the Bible, in the word, in the scriptures. The word teaches us about God. The word shows us God. The word teaches us about God's character, even about God's plans and desires for our life, about eternity with God. The Bible teaches us all these things about God. And not only that, but we also have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who comes and lives within us. But not only that, the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. The Holy Spirit often speaks to us in a still, small voice. Those, those God moments that you have and you've heard and you hear them, Learn not to ignore them, but learn to pay attention to that still, small voice that speaks into your heart. And as the crowd is coming by, and Bartimaeus is sitting there, and he hears all the commotion, Bartimaeus called for the son of David. Now this is a phrase that, just by saying it, says that he recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah. It's a phrase that is used to refer only to Messiah. So Bartimaeus, although he was physically blind, he was able to see spiritually that Jesus is the son of David. See, Bartimaeus knew, Bartimaeus saw who Jesus really was. It's amazing because those with sight missed it, but Bartimaeus saw it. He saw who Jesus really was. He's not just a guy from Nazareth. He's not just a great man. He's not just a good rabbi or a great teacher. No, he is the fulfillment of prophecy. He is the promised one. He is the anointed king of Israel. He is the son of David, the Messiah. So you need to make sure that you do not miss out on seeing Jesus. Make sure that you understand Jesus for who he is. Don't miss him. He is the one who the Bible talks about. He is talked about in the Old Testament and revealed in the New Testament. He is the son of David, the Messiah of the world, the Savior of the world. Don't miss out on who Jesus is. You see, Bartimaeus went after Jesus. When he heard in that commotion that it's Jesus, Bartimaeus started to call out. Now, I want you to understand this is probably hard work. Just think about it. Here he is sitting on the side of the road when this large commotion, this crowd of people goes by. And sitting there while they're all standing and moving and, and making noise, he needs to shout out above 
the noise of the crowd. And he begins to sh shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And it's interesting, the Bible tells us that the crowd tried to silence him. They felt that this beggar was more of a nuisance than a blessing. He was more of a problem than a solution. He was a distraction for what they wanted. See, the people rebuked him. They discouraged him. They told him he was out of line. Some of them in the crowd may not have liked the fact that he called Jesus the son of David. Some of them may not have liked the fact that he equated Jesus to the Messiah. Some of them may, may have been annoyed that this lowly beggar would have the audacity, would, would dare to try and take Jesus' attention away from the crowd and put it on himself, see? But Bartimaeus did not care what people said or thought. Nope. He wanted Jesus to have mercy on him. He dared to believe that Jesus could heal him. Have you allowed people to quiet you? Have you allowed people to discourage you from going holy after God? Have you allowed the voices in the crowd to drown out the voice of Jesus in your life? Have you let the opinion of the crowd stop you from going after God the way that you know you should and the way that you really want to? Hmm. So back to our story, Bartimaeus is calling out for the son of David when suddenly Jesus calls for Bartimaeus. Now, I, I want to pause here and just take you back to what that scene may have looked like that day. As I mentioned, beggars were, were often seated, lying, resting on the sides of the roads towards Jericho. And many of them would have had a, a cloak, a blanket, a, a shawl type it was probably a multi-purpose piece of clothing, material, instrument. And, and the beggars, especially blind beggars, would probably sit with this cloak laid out in their lap. And when they would beg for food or beg for money, people would, would throw it into their lap and the cloak would collect it. And the cloak was kind of their safety blanket, their security blanket. It kept them safe. It probably protected them from the dust of the road. And maybe if it was cool, it would protect them and keep them warm. So it was multi-purpose, but largely to gather the alms and the food that they would get. And the blind people especially would feel something fall into the cloak and then they could find it and either put it away or if it was food and they were hungry they could eat or save it for another time and so this is what's happening is as Bartimaeus is sitting there with the cloak on his lap as the crowd is coming by as he's calling out for Jesus suddenly Jesus says call him see when Jesus called Bartimaeus threw off his cloak by throwing off his cloak, he's, he's saying, I'm giving up the begging. I don't need the begging. I'm throwing off my cloak. He declares he has no longer need of it. By throwing off his cloak, he declares that Jesus is the Son of God, the promised Messiah, the only true hope that he has. Do you have a cloak that you need to throw off? You know? Some of you might be holding on to a cloak and not even realize it. Some of you might just be, be hiding behind something that's stopping you from going after God with your life. Or, or maybe you just think you have everything worked out. You, you've got God all figured out. You know exactly your faith, that you, you don't need to grow in your faith anymore. That maybe some of you have put God into this nice, neat little box in your life, and this is the part where God plays in my life, but, but not all of my life. I've got God compartmentalized over here. But you know, when you keep God in a box, it's not God that loses, because he never changes. You lose. 
So Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and he, he jumps to his feet. You see, he didn't want to stay where he was. He didn't want to just be a beggar on the side of the road. No, he wanted to move forward. He wanted to meet Jesus. I, I can kind of just imagine this scene, if you would, as he, Jesus calls him, he throws off his cloak and he jumps to his feet, but he's blind. Now he's trying to find his way to Jesus. I, I think maybe somebody would have, you know, grabbed his arm and said, here, let me help you. The, the crowd may have parted. Bartimaeus may have stumbled a little bit. The crowd may have pushed him a little bit, helping him. He, he, he gets to Jesus. And then Jesus asks him what we probably think is the most ridiculous question. What do you want me to do for you? Well, I mean, I mean, isn't the answer obvious? I mean, it's obvious to us, isn't it? We know what Bartimaeus wants. I mean, Jesus, Jesus has to know what Bartimaeus wants. So then why does Jesus ask him one of the most obvious questions of all time? You see, I think that Jesus was giving him an opportunity to specify his need and in the process, declare his faith. And his answer, of course, is, I want to see. Well, Jesus says, go, your saints restored immediately. Immediately, Bartimaeus could see, and, and he follows Jesus. You know, sometimes that's, that's what we need to do. Sometimes you need to be willing to step out and boldly declare what you need from God. Declare it in faith. Believe it in faith. Trust God in faith. See, while Bartimaeus was blind, he could actually see. The crowd wasn't quite sure who Jesus was, but blind Bartimaeus saw Jesus as the Son of God, the Messiah. He saw the one. He saw him. That, and he knew that once he met Jesus, he no longer would need his cloak. He received his sight and followed Jesus. See, sometimes the blind can see better than the rest of us. Now I wonder, do you think that Bartimaeus was changed forever after he met Jesus? I think the answer is an obvious yes. I mean, just... Just imagine it for a moment, that every time he saw, it was a constant reminder of what Jesus had done in his life. Just, just, just think about it. Every morning when he woke up and he could see, every morning was a new reminder once again of what Jesus had done in his life and who Jesus is in his life. And because of that one encounter with Jesus, his life was dramatically and forever changed. What about you? Have you met Jesus in such a way that you are changed forever? Have you allowed Jesus to touch you in the depth of your soul, in the depth of your heart, in the depth of your spirit? Have you, have you had an encounter with Jesus so that he was so real and is so real that you know that you could never turn away from him. You can never walk away from him. You can never forget what Jesus has done for you. That every time, every day is a new day where you would experience the love of Jesus and know the grace of God in your life. What about you? See, is every day for you a reminder of who God is in your life? Maybe you're watching today, and as we're talking about the story of Bartimaeus, you're understanding that, you know what? Like Bartimaeus of that day, you need to meet Jesus today. Well, we want to help introduce you to Jesus. And we have a real simple way to help you, if you would, if you pick up your phone and text the word LOVE to 416-267-1189. We're going to leave that up. It's, the number's on the bottom of your screen. We'll leave it up for a few minutes so you can grab your phone. Just 
send a text to that number and just the word love. It's going to ask you a few prompts for your name and information. We want to get back in touch with you and help you to meet Jesus so that he can forever change your life. And for the rest of you, I think Jesus is asking you the same question that he asked Bartimaeus that day. What do you want me to do for you? What is it that you believe God to do for you? What is it that you need God to do for you today? What is it that you need Jesus to touch in your life? What areas of your life do you need to trust to the love and guidance of Jesus? What do you need Jesus to do for you today? Would you just take a moment as we pray to say, Lord, I give this part of my life to you. I need you in this part of my life. Maybe you have a, a physical need of healing. Maybe you, you, you have a financial issue. Maybe, maybe you're praying for the salvation of loved ones. Whatever it is, maybe you need a job. Whatever it is that you need Jesus to do for you, as I pray for you today, would you as well agree and believe like Bartimaeus that Jesus could do it for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the story of Bartimaeus, of how sometimes the blind can see. Lord, I pray for those today who need Jesus to do something in their life. Lord, I ask that you would raise up faith within them, that you would strengthen their faith and you would cause any doubts and unbeliefs to fall away. Lord, that you would meet them and that you would do for them what others might think is impossible. And we give you all the honor and glory. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us at Highway Online. And I trust that the story of Bartimaeus touches your life. And remember, again, if you need to meet Jesus, text love to the number that we gave you a few moments ago. In the meantime, have yourself a great week. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Remember this, Highway is a place to belong.